On this episode of Doing the Most, we're going to make an oyster stout style mead. Now, I'm going to jump right into the ingredients list because strap yourself in, it's kind of a lot. Here we go. 7 pounds of dark caramelized honey, 3.3 pounds of dark liquid malt extract, half a pound of lactose, half a pound of maltodextrin. For the specialty grains, we will have 8 ounces of caramel 120L, 4 ounces of roasted barley, and 4 ounces of dark chocolate malt. For the hops, half an ounce of magnum and half an ounce of cascade. We will also have water up to five gallons, and of course, seven large cracked oysters. This brew had a quaint beginning starting at my local Asian grocery store. We picked up seven oysters, and these were very, very big. So I, I pared down my initial recipe estimate of 10 to seven because I didn't want to overwhelm this brew. So here is an overview of our ingredients. Hopefully you took a screenshot at the beginning of our ingredients list. And for this brew, I had my friend David along to help me because there was a lot of stirring involved. And I decided in exchange for his 90 minutes of stirring, we would split the batch. So first things first, we've got to measure out seven pounds of honey. David and I did this by tearing out our kitchen scale and glopping honey from the bottles into the brew kettle. That first bottle of honey was some cheap honey from the local chef supply store. The second bottle is round rock honey, which you've seen on doing the most previously. The cool thing about round rock honey is they include a chemical analysis of their honey on their website. So you know exactly what's in round rock honey when you brew with it. And I've made a traditional mead with this uh, that we're actually gonna drink a little bit later in this episode that came out incredible. It was step-fed honey, came out to 12% alcohol. It was slightly back sweetened and it's, it's, it's got the character of an unoaked Chardonnay with all those great honey aromatics. So we're starting a fire underneath both of our pots. brew kettle of course has the honey and we're adding a gallon of water to this Dutch oven. The Dutch oven is going to be brought up to uh, between 150 and 160 degrees and we will steep the grains in that for about a half an hour. What I'm opening here is not the traditional show mead that I was just talking about, but this is a citrus mead made with orange zest and orange juice. There was a bit of a fad on Reddit at that time with pea blossoms. It was brewed with pea blossoms, so it's vibrant purple. Into our steeping bag go those specialty grains I talked about earlier. just going to loosely knot that with a loop and that loop will help me pull it out with a wooden spoon later so that way I don't have to get my hands in the grain tea. Perfect. Our water comes up to just about 155 which is perfect and like I said the grains will steep in that water for a half an hour. Some recipes will have like a 20 minute steep, some will steep for an hour. With these grains, what we're looking for mostly is flavor and color, but not really fermentables. So the half hour should be perfect for this. When it comes to caramelizing our honey, we're gonna try and get it as close as we can to the color of the dark liquid malt extract without smoking.
So I took a sample when we started caramelizing the honey and dolloped it on the plate. So as we are caramelizing the honey, which is gonna take about 90 minutes, we can measure and see how close we're getting to that color. This is an overhead shot of David constantly stirring our honey. This was on a medium high heat and we would occasionally reduce the heat if we thought we were getting close to the smoke point. And here is a time lapse of the steeping grains. After I stirred it once about halfway through, it uh, picked up this beautiful black color. Kind of looks like Coca-Cola. I'm real into that casually stirring. Stir, 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 stir. You can see me coming in with a chopstick to check the color over and over and over and over and over again because we wanted to make sure we got it just right but didn't burn $40 worth of honey. Pitbull Sam enjoyed the honey drops, and you can see our Jackson Pollock of caramelized honey here. So flame out while we add in one gallon of water. This will crack and pop and steam, so keep your face out of it. And then we're going to add the grain tea. This all needs to come back up to a boil. And as we're waiting for that to come up to boil, we will add the bulk of the rest of our ingredients. Liquid malt extract. Our maltodextrin. our lactose, and a little bit of water to clean off the mash paddle. There we go. Using my instant read thermometer, this read at 210 and had just started bubbling to the top so I knew it was ready to add the Magnum hops. And we will consider this the official start of our boil, which will go for one hour. I am marveling here at the very, very black color of the wart. Now enter our star ingredient, the oysters. So I looked at a lot of stout recipes and the thing that I kept seeing was either cracked oysters or shucked oysters. I decided to go with cracked because I spent a dollar each on these seven oysters and I felt like I wanted to get my money's worth. Of note, only about one hit is needed to crack an oyster, not the half a dozen that I gave that first one. I switched off with David halfway, let him have some oyster cracking fun. And you can see the mess we created. This smelled like the ocean, like brine, like iodine, and like oysters. Cameo. So at the 40 minute mark, we added the oysters to the boil, trying to make sure we got every last glop of oyster into the kettle. Stir, stir, stir. And 10 minutes later, we added the cascade hops. 
So we are officially at the 50 minute mark here. Cascade goes in and we'll give it another 10 minutes. At the 60 minute mark, we kill the flame. And these are two frozen bottles of water. I am going to remove the bottles. This was very cold. So these were ready to go at the time that we killed the flame. There's a little bit of a struggle in this. The smart person in me might have dunked this in some hot sanitizer before I did this, but live and let live. It's okay if you need to fight with it. It's really important to burn off all the calories that you're drinking during your brew day by fighting with your ice cubes in your home improvement store bucket. Okay, David grabs the strainer. I grab the brew kettle. And as if we're making the world's largest Jack and Coke, we pour it in. Oyster and hop chunks immediately clogged the strainer. So we had to do a little work to move those around, dump those in the sink and keep going. And there's the rest of it. Clean as you go. And then you are just going to stir, stir, stir until that comes up to room temperature. Once you've got that to about 60 to 70 degrees and the ice has thoroughly melted, rack that off through a sanitized racking system into a sanitized carboy. Then step back drink some mead with your friend, and enjoy that incredible black color. I'm already feeling like this might be the best thing that I ever brew. And I'm a little concerned about setting the bar too high for myself. Halfway through this, the battery in the camera died, so I had to switch over. We were brewing from about 1 o'clock to 5.30 this night, so it was a long brew day. Topping that up with a little bit more water, trying to get it up to the 5 gallon mark, but leave some head space for fermentation, because this thing is going to have quite the cap formed on the top of it. Clean as you go. And the yeast we're using here is a Nottingham Ale yeast. I had ballparked this thing at coming out between 9 and 10% alcohol. I think the ale yeast is going to be able to cut through all that. I let David pitch our yeast because he's never pitched yeast before. And we cap that off with a silicon bung, give it a little bit of a shake. And we are planning on a two week ferment with this, with it being primarily done in the first week 
and then giving it another week for the yeast to kind of clean up after themselves and do their thing. The hydrometer reading came out at 1.088 once this kind of leveled out at room temperature and the yeast kicked off rather strong for what should be a pretty quick fermentation. This is going to be the first in a series of videos about this oyster mead. We'll do another video when we rack and bottle it, and then, of course, a tasting video when we're done. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell icon, and be prepared for more Doing the Most content coming soon. We've got a lot of fun videos planned. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.